the, one of the most common requests that we see is to have an automation that will generate PDF files of drawings that are in a working directory or a windchill uh, workspace and do so in such a way that the root of the, the file name stays the same, but also includes, for example, the revision of the model associated with that drawing. Um, that's actually a, a very common request and everybody does it like all the time. Everybody wants to do that. So I thought we'd show you just a quick example of what we're talking about here. So I've got all these drawings in this working directory and we're going to use NitroCell and some of the new table functionality within NitroCell to kind of show just how easy this is to automate. So, uh, and, and do it generically, meaning we could use the same worksheet with any other drawing or any other works, uh, not drawing, but you know, any other workspace or working directory uh, with a different content, no problem whatsoever. So we're going to start off by creating a execute worksheet. We'll call this do stuff. And this is just copying the template over um, from NitroCell uh, to make sure that it's in the Excel document the way we want it. So as with any good automation, we're going to start off by knowing where we're going to start, which in this case is uh, an empty uh, session of Creo. So I want to make sure that my, my session is empty. Let me blow this up a little more so we can see it better. And then the first thing we want to do is we want to go get the list of components that are, or list of uh, drawings that are in this working directory here. So we want to write that to a table. So I'm going to create a table using NitroCell. And we'll call this uh, um, draw list. And I'm just going to go over here and say, I want this to go on a tab called wow tab, which is a new tab that's going to be created here. We could specify where we want it to go on that tab or that worksheet, but I'm just going to let NitroCell figure that out. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to list the files. We'll use the table option to, to ensure that it's going to write to a table when we're finished. And I want all my drawing files to go to that table that I'm creating. So when I press the do it button here, it's going to connect to Creo. It's going to go get that information out of the working directory. It's going to create that tab that's missing in Excel and the table and write all that data in there, which it just did. So um, here's our list of drawings. And then the item root here is basically just a helper column that we add that removes the extension off the file. So you have something um, that's useful for like Power Query. We'll talk about it a bit. So um, we have that stuff listed, but we don't have anything in session yet. So let's go ahead and open that up. So let's do a uh, an open, and we have a table option for that. So this is going to reference that table we just did, TBO colon DRW list, and we're going to open all those in session. So when I run this again, we're we're erasing memory and going through this entire process, but this time. As our last operation, we have all our drawings and their models loaded into session. Okay, so let's go get the revision out of each of the models. So let's go to, uh, we're going to need a table to write to. So I'm going to create a table. And we'll call this uh, param list. Go ahead and put it on the same wow tab that's here. And now we'll do a get. And in this particular case, uh, we could use a table as a reference, but I'm not going to get the revision off the table. I'm going to get them out of the models. So let's go and get, um, let's say, all the PRT files. And we're going to write those to param list. I need revision. And we'll do the same thing for any assembly files that are also being processed that are drawings. And we're going to put those there. So now if I run this, um, again, it's clearing Creo session, getting the list. Now it's building that other table. And you can see here that we have uh, apparently more content than we asked for. Why is that? Well, some of these models don't have a drawing with them. That's why, that's why you're seeing this. So now the big question is, how do we get the revision from this table over into this to get our final name? Well, it's actually pretty easy. Let's go take a look here at how to do that. So let's go to, um, let's say we want a PDF and we want to do an export of a drawing PDF and let's see what its requirements are. So it needs a table with item name and output name and then a optional directory uh, as a, a subfolder. So let's go ahead and put in the, the subfolder and we'll call this my PDFs and that's going to be writing to a subfolder here. And uh, let's see here. So we need a table with item name and output name. Now, this is where it gets kind of cool. 
we're going to actually use Excel to figure this out. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to say, you know something, I want to get the data. I'm going to create a connection to that table in something called Power Query. And um, I'm going to close and load this interface, but keep the connection to that data. But the cool thing about this is that table that we just created uh, here is now uh, a Power Query connection to that source data. Okay, so we can actually use this uh, to do some other cool things. And I'm going to do the same thing for this table here. So I'm going to load all this data in, and then I'm going to I'm going to close and load to, and only keep the connection. So now I've got two connections to the two tables and their data that they contain. Now let's go and do a merge on those data, uh, on those connection references. So I'm going to use the drawing list, and I'm also going to use the parameter list. And this is where it really becomes cool. So in NitroCell, we're writing out this item root in every table that's being written. Um, so the item name is an iterable reference, but the item root is basically just kind of a stripped name there. So basically, if I have a drawing and a part that have the same root name, I want to join those together. Uh, not join them together, but I want to use them as a, a reference to merge on. And I only want the matches that are there. So this is going to bring back a very nice summary of the eight parts that um, I have this data for. So we're going to include, expand this uh, column out here and bring the value in. And now I'm going to take the item root uh, for each of these drawings and we're going to merge those. And we're going to call this output name, I think is what the column was asking for. And we're going to merge this using an underscore. So this is, this is our, uh, this is the drawing and this is the name we want it to be when it's completed. Final, final drawing names is going to be the name of this table. And then I'm going to do a save and close load two. And in this case, we're going to actually put it on the existing worksheet and we're going to stick it right here. So basically we've gotten our list of, of uh, drawings. We've got our list of models with their revisions. We've done a join on those. And these are actually the drawings that we can export um, and get this, uh, each of these drawings with the proper, they all have revisions and we can actually process them. So if we come here and we see output name, yeah, that's correct. Um, so I need to reference that table with TBL final DRW names. Now, if I run this, um, we should be pretty close to success here. Oh, there's one thing we want to do. We do want to refresh all of our connections. Now, what that does is it's, it's going to force all of the data that's written, uh, being written and all of the power queries to kind of reevaluate in Excel before it moves on to the next step. That ensures that if we change to a different folder or we have new content that comes in, that it's always being forced to compute all that information. So it says here, our draw, our subfolder doesn't think it's, okay, so we need a subfolder. So uh, let's insert some copied cells. Let's do it again. And because we're dealing with an automation, uh, I'm going to do a de delete of a directory and then a creation of a directory. These are subfolders and my PDFs is what that's going to be. So if, if that folder is already here, it's going to delete it and it's going to create it again. Then we'll have a fresh, a fresh place to run uh, or to write our content. So if we run this now, you'll notice that it's getting to the point where it's starting to loop through each of those items and it's starting to write out each of those PDF files with the revision associated with each of those names. So that's a pretty, pretty straightforward process. I mean, in less than probably 15 lines of code here, we've been able to come up with an automation that we could move to a completely different folder and do the same exact thing and have it generate all of the PDFs on demand.